This meeting is being recorded. Okay. So, um, there's a few people joining us for India. Um, and I guess um, just to outline why and stuff like that. So, I think I might do it um, the other way. I might start with the, the US trip. You know, we've obviously had a really, really good trip to the US. Um, the reason why we were in the US was for In and Connect. And again, In and Connect is the largest property export in the world. Um, we were in Las Vegas. I set up an office in Las Vegas. Um, you know, we were a sponsor. We had an exhibition stand. There's a whole bunch of people there. Like, geez, like it was crazy. The directors of Remast, directors of EXP, directors of Compass, directors of Keller Williams, everyone was there, right? Mm -hmm. This is high caliber stuff. This is where the world's best, best are there. Uh, we had met a few celebrities, you know, Jason Oppenheim from Sun Selling Sunset was there. Uh, but it was really cool. It was a really, really cool event. And the reason why we were there is very, very, very simple. We are trying to connect the dots, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and this is the objective for this year, I suppose, for myself um, in terms of accountability, is trying to create new opportunities for everyone across the network, right? Mm -hmm. So um, the trip was really cool as I got throughout three weeks, you know, went through Fiji. We actually, in fact, set up an office in Fiji and a new corporation as well. I was there yesterday with the lawyers in Fiji setting this up. So the idea is very, very simple, right? So uh, we are connecting the U.S. with people around the world. And the thing about the U.S. is the American dream is very, very, very powerful. And, you know, I have to say this, I'll be very, very blunt. A lot of Australians look up to the U.S., right? They go, if you approach a young person, you ask them, would you like to be in Hollywood or New York? They go, yeah, of course I do, right? I guarantee you, right, we, we put up we put up social media stuff that we're in the U.S., a lot of Asians are like, wow, this is so cool. So, so cool. You know, one day I would love to live in California or New York and work in real estate. And that's the point, right? It allows our agents and our brokers to eventually live in the US and to experience the US lifestyle. Uh, and we, we can sponsor that for you. We can do visas, we can do whatever, right? Um, so the new opportunities with the US, we've picked up, just two seconds, you people, we've picked up a lot of projects. So the idea is, is it's very, very simple, right? Um, the US is um, what I would call a supplier's market. So um, a lot of, there's a lot of developers in the US and we picked up, you know, stuff in Las Vegas, stuff in California, right? Um, and these are developers wanting to sell. And we approached them and said, look, you know what, if we bring a buyer, how much commission do you pay us? Um, some said 5%, some say 3%. The US market is very, very different. You know, the buyer's agent is very, very active in the US and the sellers pays for both. So in a traditional real estate model, you know, if you bring a buyer to a seller, obviously the seller's agent would list a property for 3%, but in that contract, that seller will also pay 3% to the buyer. So the buyers and the sellers are getting 6% commission. Now in some states like California, you can represent both the buyers and the sellers. And that means, get this right, a million dollar property, you're getting six, $60,000 of commission. It's crazy, right? But that's how the US works. <laughs> um, and, you know, I think even that's been challenged now in a, in a Department of Justice case. Um, but the opportunity is very, very simple. I've set up new offices in the US now in the future. If you want to go to the US, let me know. I can sponsor you. It's very, very simple. Um, the US is a supplies market. In other words, people love to buy stuff in the US. You know, we'll be surely in India. I guarantee you, if we go into India and we have a seminar lined up and we say, look, Imagine yourself in the US, imagine your kids, do it for your kids, right? Education, college, new lifestyle, get out of Delhi, you know, think about the opportunity for green car in the future, even become an American citizen. I guarantee you there'll be a thousand people lined up with money, right? And we've done it. You know, we've asked people, would you like to do it? And, you know, in fact, in, um, in Fiji, we met a couple, you know, that was very, very, very keen. They've got the money. Uh, they've made a lot of money and they want us to sponsor them to the US. I said, no problems, let's talk. Um, so the first thing is we've identified, we actually signed up a lot of projects now and agents can sell that. You can move to the US and do it or you can do it from Australia. Um, but the idea is to connect buyers from the world with developers in the US and vice versa. You know, in, in um, Fiji, I think it's the opposite. You know, we're connecting buyers from the US 
to people in to developers in Fiji. And it's like we did exactly the same. We met developers in Fiji, we sound the developer. Um, and the thing about Fiji in the US is you know, a lot of Americans know Fiji by the but the Fiji water brand, right? The Fiji water is everywhere in Starbucks, right? And and people love this and people go, wow, Fiji. And I, I spoke to some colleagues in America, they were like, wow, you're in Fiji, that's so cool. <laughs> you know, I would love to move to Fiji. It's much cheaper than Hawaii. You know, it's a great environment. People are great. Things are so, so, so cheap. You know, and we can, I can definitely see myself living in Fiji one day, right? And that's like connecting the dots between Fiji. So that's the first thing. The new opportunities we have in the US um, are, have already been done. And um, what I've done is I've actually hooked up the CRM to the website and you will see all the projects very, very shortly as well. The same thing, India. So it's going to be a global um, listing mechanism and we as you know we already listed this globally 92 international websites uh, so we can sell through those as well i've also got stuff like zillow which is like the real estate.com of the us uh, a few mos's as well in the us uh, new offices in the us we've already got four just fyi but i'll just add another one um, so these are, you know, obviously Regis offices, right? So it's very, very easy to tap in. I just signed a new agreement. That was it. And in the future, if you want to go to the US, you let me know. Um, we've got uh, four already. Um, so we're, the company is actually corporate in Delaware. Um, there's three offices already, plus Las Vegas. Reason for Las Vegas is that's going to be our back end as well. You know, I've got... Um, I've actually signed agreements with employment agreements already. Um, so these are our support staff in the US to supply US agents as well as um, agents going over. So that's another thing that I've done. Um, opportunities for agents and brokers, um, very, very simple. Like if you're in Australia and you tell me, and I've got maybe 10 people already lined up. Uh, one of them is actually on, on track to, to go there very, very shortly. Um, if you want to go to the US and just to experience things a little, right? The thing about Australia is, is very, very cool. Uh, Australians, if you're an Australian passport holder, um, this is probably the only country in the world where... You know, Australia is basically just one signature. I sign one thing and you're in the US. It's that simple, right? It's pretty crazy. Um, it's called the E3 visa. Um, there is a few criteria you have to meet. For example, you need to have a bachelor's degree. Um, you got to have an employment offer and that kind of stuff. And the employment offer is easy. I can do it in five seconds, right? Um, once I sign that piece of paper, you get a visa in the US. And get this, your dependents can work, your wife, your husband, whatever, they can work in the US. This is freaking incredible, right? Um, FYI, how the US works, you know, a lot of people want the green car and the citizenship. A lot of people compete for this one here, the H-1B visa, right? A little Indian technology company like Tata, for example, sends Indian nationals to the US in the hope that one day they get the H-1B visa. You know how competitive that is? Freaking competitive, right? It's virtually impossible to get that. Um, but the E3 is very, very, very easy. Um, I've actually had a question on, you know, how do I become a US green card holder or a passport um, citizen in the future? And that's something we can also look at too. Um, it's called the A1, L1B visa, which transfers employees from one country to another. And we can do it because we've got companies in Australia and in the US. So it's just simply a transfer of employee from one country to another. So that, that again, actually gives you uh, what's called dual intent. In other words, you have the intention of becoming a US citizen in the future. And that means it's a phenomenal thing as personal growth in your life. You know, I don't know how many people I've spoken to that would just pay any money to do that. Uh, and that's something I'm definitely exploring when I go to India. Um, the last thing is new initiative and project. As I said, um, I'll shortly announce that we've got sign up with Las Vegas, um, San Francisco, Los Angeles. We're doing the Eastern, uh, sorry, the Western, uh, the West Coast at the moment. Um, we got invited back to Florida by the Florida Realtors Association with 65,000 members. Um, as a sponsor, I said, yep, no problems. We're going back in November uh, to present our ideas to the Florida Realtors Association. Apparently, Donald Trump is going to be there um, if he's not in prison by then. Um, but, you know, and obviously January next year is New York, In and Connect New York. And that's a big one. You know, again, feel free to come along, you know. And again, you know, these are the, the best of the best in the world, you know. And I think, you know, this is, Good thing to, to experience. I've got a few agents 
that are definitely thinking coming along already. And of course, this is the east coast of the US. And again, you know, targeting uh, a different region of the US. But again, we're sponsored. And, you know, I had maybe like one or two people. I can give you free tickets. These are usually quite expensive. I can give you free tickets into the conference itself, you know, um, because we are a sponsor. But you want to plan for that, you can. It's in, it's cold. It's going to be freezing, right? It's in the winter. But it is worthwhile. I lived in New York for a little while. It is a, it is a world, I would say, um, if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere, right? <laughs> um, any questions I can answer about that? Hi, Paul. Uh, this is only for um, you, Australia citizen. Correct. Yeah. Unfortunately, you're Singaporean, right? Yeah, that's right. I think, you know, you know, Singapore has an E3 program. I don't know how Singapore got it, but do this. Singapore and Ireland, I was looking at it. Singapore and Ireland have an E3. I think it's probably leftovers right. from, from the Australians. Um, look, I kid you not, look. Yeah. Singapore, Singapore has an E3 visa. I don't know. I think it's probably like the Australians are first. Mm. And then if Australia doesn't use it, then Singapore gets it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how it works. You have to consult immigration lawyer. But Singapore is one of these countries. I think it's because of the free trade agreement of the USA. Um, yeah. Chile is another one. Ireland's another one. You know, the US signs all these agreements. And then obviously, I think this is the this was the Bush administration with John Howard. I think I remember um, this came in um, under the E3 visa. Um, but I think, yeah, Singapore, you just have to look at that as well. And again, I think it's very, very similar. It's a, it's a, it's an employment letter from an American company, which we are. Um, and then once, it, once we get signed, it gets approved by the immigration officials in the U.S. Go in. Yeah. Any other questions? And I'll move on to India. Well, I should react to India. I'm going to go to the bathroom. I've been sitting for two hours. Anyone else? Can I ask, can I ask any questions about the US? Um, but I don't think overall it's a really good trip. You know, I've been looking at maybe uh, certainly Florida um, and then certainly the uh, East Coast of the USA. I've been looking at even Hawaii as an example. You know, there's just so many opportunities. We're registered in four states at the moment. Um, it's gonna take some time to be registered in all 50 states. But we'll get there. So Paul, just a question there. Um, does that mean that uh, you you could actually work as an agent in the U.S. or you need any special qualification? Okay. Yes or no. So the contract we've signed up, there's two types of contracts, right? So there's obviously what's called a referral agreement. So like in Australia, a referral agreement doesn't need a license, correct? You give the name and the phone number to an internal sales rep of that developer. So for example, I think we signed up somewhere in Las Vegas, right? And then this guy has, I don't know how many, like, hundreds of townhouses, right? Paying um, 5% for a, uh, a conjunction, so a co-op, co right? 5% for a co-op. In other words, you have a license in that state of Nevada or 3% for referral. In other words, you don't have a license. You give a, a name and a number to the agent within the developer and they will do it for you. And to me, that's simple. You can do that from anywhere. Surely, you know, even if you're in Singapore, you can say, look, I've got a Singaporean guy wants to invest in a townhouse in Las Vegas, loves Las Vegas, right? Let's do it. Right. So you don't necessarily need a license. Okay. Yep. You just have to refer con yeah. And the you, referral, you, can do, you can do the deal sitting here in Australia. Absolutely. Without, without any problems. Absolutely. And that's, I think that's the point, you're right. It's connecting buyers and sellers across the world with developers. And I think it's the easiest. I was looking at the US trying to compete with the likes of EXP and Compass and, you know, they're all losing money, well, except for EXP. Everyone's losing money because it's so cutthroat, you know, um, it's, everyone's taking less and less and less and everyone's kind of losing money. So I think this is a really good niche model for us. Any other questions? Cool. cool. And so that's the US trip. And certainly the next one will be announced is Florida, which is in November. And again, it's a really, if you haven't been to US, the, the air ticket wasn't that like, so it was like $1,300 a person or something like that. Tax deductible, of course. So you can get the GHT back as well. <laughs> um, so it wasn't, wasn't too bad. Uh, Florida's in November, and then it was in New York in January next year. Yeah,
जनवरी All right. Should we move on to India? Rihanna, you've been playing India for us. I'm going to sit back. I'm going to use the bathroom. You want to just sit here and then go through it? Yeah. Um, I'm going to go. I'll be right back. Hey, Paul, this is Dilip here. How are you? Hey, man. How are you? Good. What's drive you to go to India? <laughs> we love India. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> we love India. Everything I love the food. I had some really nice Indian curries in Fiji. That was great, man. I just back after a four month of my stay in Delhi. All right. Yeah. Look, um, the the point of this session is to get some advice. Also, you know, obviously, yeah. I'm taking Rihanna to India. It's her first time. I want to make sure she's safe. You know, I've been to India by myself with a few uh, male colleagues. So it's a little okay. bit different. So I, you know, I'd love to get some advice, but maybe. Yeah, yeah. Please call me whenever you have a free time. <laughs> I actually have two people in India already. So, you know, what happened was when I was at Cambridge, I taught a few people and these were my students. You know, I've oh, known okay. them for a long, long, long time. So I trust them. So they said to me, look, you know, you get a car, you get a car a driver, you yep. know, they're happy to drive us around. I said, I don't want to trouble you too much. But look, you know, let's, I'll, let's let Rihanna. Yeah, no, just talk to me because I have done real estate work in India. So I have a very good understanding of the Indian market. So I'm yeah. happy to help you anything if you need advice. Perfect. Thank you very much, Lip. Um, So I'll let Rihanna run through the itinerary and then um, then we can do any q and I'll be back in, say, three minutes. Yeah, sure. Alrighty. Um, with regards to our itinerary for India, we are gone for about 12 days. Um so we're gone from the 6th until the 18th. That includes about four days worth of travel. Um, so we fly out on the 6th in order to allow ourselves a day before the conference starts. So we're flying out from the Gold Coast Airport um, the morning of the 6th. We stop over in Singapore on our way um, and then we will be um, in India as of the 7th on the afternoon. Uh, for those of you who are coming or are wondering where we're staying, we will actually be at the um, oh, hotel, the, the, the Meridian. So, yeah. yeah, the hotel in which the conference is being held. Um, the day before the conference starts, which is the 8th, um, we plan on having breakfast at the hotel before going out and um, seeing some of the local real estate agencies. So our plan there is to partner with some local agencies in order to bring buyers for our um, investments overseas. We see India as a large buyer population. So we plan on utilizing the buyer population in India through the smaller agencies that already exist there um, and forming partnerships in order to sell our stock overseas. So stock in America, stock in Australia. Um, while we're there, we also want to visit some local stock. So we will be in New Delhi for the first couple of days. Um, New Villa Homes is one lot of stock that I want to go see. We also plan to see um, HSBC in the afternoon just to speak to some accountants with regards to operating our business there. Um, the 9th and the 10th is our conference days. Um, so as you can see, we have breakfast at the hotel in the mornings. We set up for the conference and the conference actually begins at um, 10 a.m. So that's when the doors open. Um, there'll be a lunch in between and the conference actually ends around 6 p.m. Um, and we will have dinner afterwards. So that is basically the first week. The conference is on a Friday or a Saturday. Um, and then we roll over into the second week um so we have actually booked our sunday out to just do tourist activities because it's a sunday um <laughs> as you all know we don't always work on sundays um 
but the following uh, week we have a few things planned. So on the Monday, we actually plan to fly out of New Delhi to Mumbai. Um, the reason why we are doing both New Delhi and Mumbai is because um, at this point in time, we're yet to find out who we will be meeting at the conference, but we want to be able to give ourselves some flexibility in case some of the softwares, some of the brands, some of the people that we're meeting at this conference are in Mumbai or in New Delhi. It gives us a bit of flexibility to arrange times to see them outside of the conference while we're there. Um, so we are flying to Mumbai. Um, we'll be staying at the Novotel in Mumbai. So we fly out on the um, the Monday morning. We arrive around lunchtime and we will travel to the Novotel to book in. I've currently left that afternoon blank um, and I've just realised this is not the updated schedule for me. That's okay. Um, all right, the... Second day in Mumbai, um, we're doing the same thing as New Delhi in terms of visiting local agencies. Um, so there's a few there, visit right sell, uh, right sell property and click to homes. Um, the Wednesday, um, I plan on setting up a meeting for Pipe Drive, which is a CRM in India, um, just to look at a few different options for operating over there. Um, we also want to view local developments in the afternoon. So these are a few appointments that are yet to be scheduled. And on the Thursday, uh, we plan on doing a visit to the local Regis offices and any further developments that we have not yet completed on the Wednesday. Um, and then clicking over our last, oh, actually the Thursday afternoon, um, is when we fly out of Mumbai and back to Delhi. Um, given we only have that one day in Delhi prior to the conference, um, I've allowed for a few more days in Delhi before we return to Australia. So um, before we return, um, we return on the Thursday afternoon. So we'll get in on the Friday and that Friday allows us to meet with uh, some property lawyers, visit the Regis offices in Delhi uh, to set up any further um, offices we may need. We're also going to meet with some private finance in Delhi as well um, and an accounting firm just to ensure that all of our business um, requirements are there. Um, the 17th is the Saturday, so I currently have that booked out. And um, on the Sunday, we fly out, we transit to the Gold Coast through Singapore. Um, and that's early in the morning, that flight leave. So that's our general schedule. Um, like I said, we still have a few appointments to be confirmed, but these will be confirmed as of next week and everyone will be provided an updated schedule so that they're able to tag along with us to meetings if they should want to. Okay, any questions? Um, I, guess, I guess the important thing is, if you wanna come along, is um, the conference itself. So um, the reason we're going to India is exactly the same principle as before, is um, to connect the dots, right? So um, I don't know, I think the Indian market's more kind of like a supply market in terms of this one. Don't know where it is. Mm -hmm. This one? Yeah. Yeah, it's more of a, it's more of a supplies market. So in other words, um, people from India are going to buy um, stuff in Australia and the US. So that's kind of the idea. So the conference itself is really, really cool. Um, obviously, we're a sponsor. You can come in for free. You can exhibit your stuff for free. Um, and it's tied into the citizenship. And that's something I haven't really mentioned yet. Um, so a lot of the overseas buyers from, uh, from India, for example, wants to tie up 
the real estate investment with a citizenship. And that's why we're, uh, we're there as well. But you can, you can see, you can, you can look at for yourself who, who's participating and some of the exhibitors are, are your who's and who's the world. You can see, right? You can see the government partners, the, like St. Lucia, that's a, that's, a, that's a passport for sale. These are all passports for sale. Um, you know, partners. Um, this is an American firm that specializes in EB-5. You can see all these people, EB-5s, um, and obviously we're there as well. So these are some of the companies that we'll be meeting. Um, and it's, it's a great insight on the market for passports. You know, I've, as I said, I've been quite fortunate to live in different parts of the world and all, all multiple passports. But I think, you know, um, that that dream is is strong. You know, a lot of Indians who like to exit and move somewhere else um, to get another passport, I suppose. Well, any, any questions about anything? Yes, Paul. This is yes. very clear. You know. So you are saying like if Indians are purchasing property in Australia, so we will be sponsoring their visa sooner or later they can become a citizen here in Australia. That's what you mean? No, <laughs> we don't sponsor visa through. So yes. Australia doesn't Australia doesn't have a, a property investment visa. Unlike no, no, the not, but they have SVS visa in case if you are an investor in any kind yes. of business yes. or property. So, I mean, we're not, we're not a law firm, right? So we do have yes. immigration lawyers that can, and are you, are you an immigration lawyer? I can't remember if you were. Um, immigration agents um, as well, yes. migration agents. Um, we've got some people in Oxbridge that are also migration agents. And I think it's very, very beneficial to come along. But okay. um, but as far as I know, for the investor visa, it's usually a business. Yep. So certainly if you buy a business, yeah, sure. That, that's that's not a problem. And we can sell them businesses. I've had clients that just want to buy a business just to come here to get a visa. Yep. But what is your intention to bring Indian client to Australia or in India itself? Uh, at this stage, more Indian clients to Australia and the US. But as I said, I, this is the first time we've done this in India. Okay. And there could be opportunities for Australians in India. It's uh, a two-way two thing. Yeah, but uh, because Indian market is right now is oversupplied and mm -hmm. right, roughly most of the city, especially Delhi and Mumbai, has 38% vacancy rate and wow. oversupply. Right now, the right. properties in India. So I Australians see. are less uh, interested to go in India <laughs> and buy when there is no rental return. You know, yeah. The, yeah. I see. I see. But just correct me if I'm wrong. The the property market in India is very very expensive. Mumbai and Delhi are yes. incredibly expensive. In city, expensive. in city, um, uh, well, diameter, yes. But if you are going suburban, no. It's not like look. Uh, 200,000 Australian dollar, you can purchase mm -hmm. three bedroom, nice bedroom apartments. Right. Okay. And the Sorry. rental is just 200, 300 dollar a month. So, so it's Australian crazy. will never get attracted with this investment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's what we're really keen to find out. You know, I've, I've never done this in India, but I'm really, really keen to find out, just like we've done in the US, yep. you know, meeting different people, speaking to different people, visiting companies. Um, and I, I would love some advice if you've got any first hand information about India, yep. what we're supposed to be doing, meeting. You know, we've got a, some general idea, yep. but you know, Dilip, you're from India, man. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm saying. I'm India. <laughs> yeah. Tell us, you know, little things like what, what to watch out for. You know, is, is, it, is it safe? You know, have, yeah, what? yeah, it is safe. Don't worry about that. The law nowadays in India is very strict, so don't worry about anything about your going in there staying because yeah. La Meridian is five-star hotel that's very nice and very safe and secure and sure. especially Delhi and Mumbai are very safe place don't worry about okay. anything Just, and what, yeah. what about transportation do you recommend a driver yeah yeah, yeah all caps and everything is all fine just yeah. keep couple of number like you know 100 number and mm. all those safety network otherwise yeah. you will be fine the police are very active for the foreigners okay. they, once you call you, they will be in trouble do you recommend we, we rent a car and hire a car ourselves? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you can't no. drive it. Don't try to drive the car in Indian roads. So they are very rough drivers. So I knew we'll be following the rule and the regulation. Nobody will care. <laughs> man, we drove in Los Angeles. That was crazy, man. No, Los crazy. Angeles. Los Angeles is still civilized, but India is non-civilized. Total. <laughs> better yeah, better yeah. You, can, you can hire a driver. They are very cheap, like 100, 200 a month. That's oh, it. Wow, that is... Yeah. They will drive your car 24 by 7. <laughs>
Wow, that is true. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so that's that's the plan. That's the plan. Now we are trying to build some bridges, and obviously, uh, it's it's hooked up to the CRM, so it's just like Arcanite, you know. But yeah, no, that's fine. Include me in India. Any help, or even if you want any business things, I am happy to coordinate for you from here Thank to you. India. Thank you. Um, but but more than just that, it's also about migration. Also, we met a developer that that imports a lot of stuff from India, like modular homes and you know, uh, material. So it saves a lot of money. So that could be a potential business opportunity. Right now, just just to, sorry if I'm not disturbing you, right now the Indian market is become very, very full of fear because as a, in Delhi, especially a lot of big developers, uh, they are in a jail because, <laughs> they, yeah. Really? They are in a jail because Supreme yeah. Court in India is very active now. So what they were keep doing, they're taking the money from the buyers and they mm. are investing in two, three other projects. So now what's happened that one of the uh, uh, four biggest buyer, uh, biggest developer in India, like JP, yeah. like Amrapali, they are yeah. all in jail. And now Supreme Court has taken their projects and now they are finishing and giving to the buyers. So this is the situation going on with the big developers. Yeah. So right now the market is full of fear and yeah. uh, we have like conducted here couple of seminar in uh, Australia to yep. Indian properties. The presentation, like, you know, the attendance of the uh, people from Australia is 10% because people don't believe in Indian market. Right, I okay, okay. The, the idea of this whole thing, uh, Dilip, is more than, than going down there and actually introducing the Australian products. Yes, and that could be a very good with. because Indian yeah. people are loved to buy yes. property here in Australia. Yes, that would okay. be very good. They do, they do, yeah, yeah. And this is just a start. I know Sweden and I've been talking about different locations around the world. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Dubai, is, Dubai is definitely. Oh top. yeah, that's Dubai heaven. is amazing. I love open, Dubai. Yeah, open yeah. office there, man. That's really, really <laughs> hot market. <laughs> Dubai yeah, is yeah. hot, hot, hot. Yeah. We yeah. have Do Dubai, Doha, Qatar, Kuwait, the, all these places. We do have the Bahrain also that yes. I'm looking yes. into. So I think, yeah, it's good to be on the, starting this on a positive note. Right now, you, you making it sound a bit negative, not purposely. It's good information you're giving us. But, you know, no. like straight up saying everyone's in jail, everybody will say, you know what? I think we'll just pass on India. Let's move to the next country. <laughs> but, uh, I, I think Dil Dilip is being very realistic about what he's saying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. The Indian market is a bit, uh, bit touchy right now. Definitely, um, we yeah. can. Yeah, and and uh, probably there are people out there who want to invest in Australia primarily to get in here as a citizen or as a resident. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. is that's probably it. probably not going to happen so easily. Mm. Yeah, that, that's yeah. the that's the downside of it. But then, if you look at the Middle Eastern markets, there is a lot of um, uh, surplus money with them. Yeah, and mm -hmm. they, and they they do love to invest here and there. And they, they they also think about a futuristic plan to send their kids to to get yeah. educated in Australia, yeah. maybe. 100%. And that's that's one of the reasons they could probably invest. Yeah. 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 Good point. Is, is, is the American dream and the Australian dream very strong in India? Yeah. Yeah. 100%? Yeah. 100%. Especially the US. Yes. Especially the US, right. Because right now, the lot of students from India is going to US because uh, Australia, because of the tightness in the visa rule. Yeah. And also with the COVID, I think most of the students now diverted to US. That's what I heard. People are struggling to get a labor here, which yeah. they, especially they are getting from the student. But yeah. the student coming rate is very, very low right now in this year. Well, I have to agree. Yeah. I think the US attracts the best of the best, correct? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay. All right. So if that's still the case, right? I mean, obviously that's that's kind of our model, right? We go in there, we, we can promote the US, promote Australia. And you know, the Indian market is more of a supplies market, I suppose, yeah. of people. Right. Yeah. We sell projects in the US, we sell projects in Australia to to the Indian market. Uh, Paul, just a question. Do we have some kind of a flyer? I've been asking for this because I, I want to connect with the contacts that we have in India already yeah. to let yeah. them know that we're coming in and we're showcasing X, Y, Z. We just need to have like the projects that uh, Matthew and, and Manik had. If we can put those and say these are the projects we have available or this is uh, some kind of a, 
a, a flyer or a pamphlet that we could send out oh, to the clients and say, this is what we have. We can accommodate that. I think yeah, I think that's, that's important. Okay, so I'm going to ask you next week, sweetheart. Huh? Yeah, we've, we've got, we've got, we, we can do something. Yeah, no problems. Yeah, because sh sending it by email to them and letting them know ahead of time, we're coming and why are we coming and what do we have to show? Because the time will be so limited at, at the site itself and two days is not enough. If we educate them ahead of time, so they bring in their buyers. For example, my contacts are real estate agents. I don't yeah. want just them to come. I want them to already prepare their clients to come in with their clients so we yeah. can close deals. Not to just meet and greet and then let it go. And then uh, as soon as we leave India, it'll be very difficult to get their attention again. But if we're there, right there in the midst of the moment, and they see everything, and they believe, I mean, they actually see us all being there and in one booth, it seems a bit different, and they believe it, and they want to go ahead with it right away. So yeah. beforehand, we should give them enough information that they know why we're coming, who's coming, and what's our intention, how we're working with the agents, what commission we're going to give them. All this we need to work out beforehand, so we have it in writing, we give it to them. I've already sent in the NCNDA to three of the realtors there because we also have to secure ourselves with the projects that we have. We don't want to give them the name of the project. Next thing you know, they've already tied up. And that normally happens. But if we go this route, I think it's easier and it's, it will be more secure and there'll be people ready coming into the booth already. Uh, yeah. Beforehand, we can schedule appointments with them. We can have back-to-back -back meetings with each a uh, real estate agent coming in, that brings in a bit of hype. Even while we're there, everybody will see what we're doing. So yeah. I think that's the idea of creating that's that. That's um, a suggestion. Maybe we could do an expo in or something. I don't know. Can we do that? No. An expo if you But we'll, uh, I'll we'll, put something together. Yeah, we'll put something. Not a hard job. Not, not a hard okay. job. Yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah, something that's... that we can edit and each one of us, whoever wants to go there, wants to send it directly to their client. We can actually edit it and put our name and phone number and contact details, website, everything. So once we send it by email, they know exactly who sent it to them. Um, yeah. Not something generic the way we have it can be just a bit more precise yeah. to. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. No, Great. Yeah. Um, anything else we could talk about? Um, but I guess another thing is, um, obviously, with all the expos, if you haven't been to the ones we've organized, um, you'll see it's a great opportunity to network with the other partners that are exhibiting. Um, so this is a phenomenal uh, way to find out how, how the world is changing. Like this, this, for example, is Portugal. You can get a European passport in five years through buying a property for like 350,000 euros. It's ridiculous. And that's another thing I was looking at. You know, maybe we can expand to something like Portugal, selling for the developers in Portugal, connecting the dots with Indians, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, and the world's a, it's a big place. You know, there's opportunities for, for a lot of, for everyone, right? And I think, you know, certainly traveling and seeing different parts of the world is a form of personal growth. Absolutely. But yeah, Dubai, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Are, are we in for Bahrain yet or no? Bahrain, yeah, Bahrain, yeah. I, you sent me Bahrain. We just talk about Bahrain. Yeah. Bahrain's, a, Bahrain's an exceptionally wealthy country. Exceptional. Yeah. Um, yeah. When you open a branch uh, ball in Dubai, open a Burj Khalifa. So we will be proud of going there. <laughs> you know, Dubai is definitely on the cards. You know, Dubai yeah. is such an exciting city. I think, you know, we need to be there. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Nice to yeah. Hi. Okay. Um, on that note, just, thank you very much for attending. Uh, this is a just recording. One, just yeah. one quick, quick question. I'm, I joined late, so I might have missed. It. Was there a discussion about the people who are in Australian citizens and class two license holders working in US? Can they migrate and work there? Is there any information like that? Uh, sorry, who's 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 talking? Sorry, no, this talking. is Arun. This is Arun. Oh, Arun, yeah, yeah. Um, hey, Arun, how are you? Yeah, uh, we I mentioned that before. Yeah, so yeah, there is. There's um, there's E three. Uh, just for Australians, and I was saying this before, you know, if you have an Australian passport, uh, all you have to do is satisfy a few very basic criteria. Um, so this one is where we come in, obviously. Um, I think you need to have a bachelor's degree. 
Um, and yeah. obviously this one we can we can provide as well. But the E3 visa is phenomenally easy compared to other visas that, you know, I was talking to someone recently, they were struggling to get a tourist visa to the US. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, you know, to get a tourist visa for a lot of people. Um, and that's the thing about tourist visas. You know, I mean, uh, Rihanna was on a ISTA, right? And I said to Rihanna, don't overstay your visa because you overstay your visa, you're banned for life. You know, it's that, it's that kind of stuff. So, yeah, the US is exceptionally stringently closer. But the E3 is exceptional for Australians, 100%. How long is visa valid, Paul? Uh, indefinitely extended two years, every two years. Oh, wow. So you can live as much as you want. 100%. You get a social security number, you get a driver's license, you just like any other national in the US. And in fact, you want to become a green card holder, then there's another path you can go down. I've got an immigration lawyer already in the US. Like they, wow, they right. And Paul, what about the spouse? I mean, is she eligible to work straight away? E3 visa, get this, allows your spouse to work in the USA. This is a phenomenal attribute. This is crazy. Here, I'll show you. Um, so the... The, um, the spouse can work in the US. Family of non-immigrant workers, right? Are entitled to work in the United States of America. That is freaking ridiculous, right? You know, in the US, you know, a student visa, you cannot work 20 hours a week, right? Even the H-1B, your spouse cannot work. The E3 is exceptional, absolutely exceptional. Your spouses and kids can work in the US just like an American citizen. Wow. That's pretty well. How much roughly uh, costing to get an E3, roughly? Oh, I don't know. It's, it's cheap. It's not, not as expensive as H1B. H1B is like 5000 or something. Some ridiculous number. I think that's, it's a couple it's of hundred dollars. And yeah, come on. Oh, okay. But the essential part is not the money or the qualification. Yes. It's, it's, it's this letter I can sign off for you. That's your importer, yes. <laughs> and that's the, key. You the only hiccup you. you see there is that how, the how much you are you. going to cost, Paul? <laughs> No, it's okay, man. Let, let's, let's, just, let's, let's go to the India trip first. Um, let's go. Um, Paul, the US already Paul, set up. I've got people I've already sponsoring at the yeah. moment. Paul, Thank just you. a quick question. I was in US like for a couple of months, uh, mm -hmm. multiple different times, like 10 years back. Yeah. And uh, I was on H1B. So I understand E3 would be something similar for Australian citizens. You were the H1B? Did you finish the H1B? Yeah, I finished H1B. I was there for like a couple of months. So Did you get that the was already card? finished. Yes, yeah, so I was saying the E3 is also similar sort of work visa, but for Australian citizens only. That's right? correct. It's, it's much better than H1B though. Right. So I just want to understand because of E3 visa and the thing which you have highlighted have a legitimate offer of employment in the United States, it has to be like some salary package there. So will it be like just to uh, let them know that we want to get the visa or will it be? 100%. Like no, it's so, yeah, look, I've got an immigration lawyer that, that does that, all that back end stuff, but Oxbridge's job is to offer you that. That's the point. That's why, you know, I mean, the offering employment doesn't even have to be in real estate. It could be in advertising, marketing, administrative, whatever. You know, and that's another thing about the US. The US minimum wage laws is very, very low. Right? You know, I think in Australia, you know, we have one of the highest minimum wages in the world. Why the US is very different. You know, like the hospitality work in a coffee shop is $7 an hour. I think what I like about Australia and definitely California is that you get commission both sides, seller and buyer. <laughs> that's correct. Yeah, that's six percent. In that's India, is also the same thing, Paul. In India, seller and buyer both pay one percent each. But 1%. in California, yeah, it's in California, it's three to four percent each side. My God, three percent. Yeah, that's correct. Three percent. Yes. So, Paul, I just want to understand that once we go with this path, E three visa path. With whom I should be talking more about it, and I just want to understand. Give me a call. Maybe... Give me a call, Aaron. Let's have a chat. Okay. Give me a call. Done. We'll do that. Okay. Cool. Um, thank you, Aaron, for the time today. I'm going to have some lunch, but uh, appreciate the time today. And any questions, give me a call anytime. Thank you, Paul. Have a nice thank day. you, everyone. Good afternoon. Good morning. Bye. Thank you, Paul. Welcome. Bye. Thank Bye. you.